Hi, I'm Jeff Van West, reporting for AvWeb and IFR Magazine. And today, we're going to take a look at some common mistakes when using a portable GPS in IFR. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a portable GPS. How can I make a mistake? Well, let's just say there are some mistakes and there's some missed opportunities. We'll take a look at both. One of your first decisions is where to mount the GPS. One of the most common places is to put it on the yoke. This works well in most instances. The only problem is that if you're using it as part of your instrument scan, your head has to move from the instruments down to the GPS and back up to the instruments, which can be a problem when you're flying an IMC. The other place you can put the portable GPS is up on a window mount. This is one of our preferences. It puts the GPS squarely in your scan. However, it can block some of the instruments. Obviously, a big part of having the portable GPS is the moving map for situational awareness. However, you can fly IFR much more accurately if you use the information from track. In fact, track is one of the reasons that you want your portable GPS squarely in your instrument scan. We're flying a course of 241 to the Kennebunk VOR. You can see that we're centered on the course line and our track is showing 246. This means that even though the VOR needle is centered, we know for a fact we're going to slowly drift right of course. In order to correct that before the needle even moves, we'll make a slight left turn to establish a track 241, our desired course to the VOR. The track information on the GPS is very sensitive, so you don't want to chase the track any more than you'd want to chase the needles. Here we are tracking the 270 radial outbound from the Kennebunk VOR, but you can see from our track we're actually doing 258 over the ground. The result, of course, is that we're drifting left of course. To make a correction, we'll go back to the attitude indicator, note the associated heading, and then look down and see what our track is. Right now about 271. This isn't going to bring us back on course as we're still off course to the right. We'll make another correction on the attitude indicator. Note the associated heading. And come back to the GPS. Now tracking 283, this will definitely bring us back on course. Once we're centered on course, we can come back to a heading we hope will keep us on, and then verify with track that we're tracking over the ground where we want to be. If we can maintain this track by keeping wing level, we'll stay perfectly centered for the entire route. On Garmin displays, the track is right at the top of the moving map. When you're making a small correction to track, say your track is off by only five degrees, just make a dip turn on the coordinator. Just a smooth right turn and back up to wings level should give you a correction of about five degrees on track. Track is even more critical on the approach where you need a high level of precision, especially on the ILS. Just as with regular tracking though, don't chase the track information. Find a wings level position that gives you the track that you want. and maintain it. A common mistake when flying holds is to simply parallel the inbound leg while flying outbound because it's so easy to see on the GPS. Hey, I can just make a racetrack pattern. The problem is the correction factor used on the outbound being three or two times the correction factor used on the inbound has nothing to do with not being able to see the course. It's for wind correction and radius of turn. So even though you can see your course on the GPS, you still need to fly a correction angle on the outbound to account for the wind. If your GPS offers the final approach fix in runway, by all means put it in for your instrument approach. Having an extended course line also helps keep you on track. Even if your GPS doesn't have approaches built into it, just having the extended runway center line can help a great deal. One of the things that we recommend is that you use the same map scale all the time when you're flying instrument approaches. 
This gives you an intuitive sense of when the airplane should turn to intercept any course. Some GPS have a vertical navigation profile. This is great when you're coming into an airport and you want to descend at a constant rate, but it's also terrific for instrument approaches when you want to reach a fix at a certain altitude. Here we need to maintain about 230 feet per minute down in order to get to 1,800 feet a mile before peak intersection. And of course, having the terrain screen up can be very reassuring in approach to low minimums. Those are just a few of the common improvement areas I see when using a portable GPS under IFR. There's also the issue of using weather with a portable GPS, but that's going to take its own video. I'm Jeff Van West for IFR Magazine and AvWeb. Thanks for watching.